Number 30. To develop muscle tone, a woman lifts a 2 kilogram weight held in her hand. She uses her biceps muscle to flex the lower arm through an angle of 60 degrees. Letter A. What is the angular acceleration? If the weight is 24 centimeters from the elbow joint, her forearm has a moment of inertia of 0.25 kilogram meter squared, and the net force she exerts is 750 newtons at an effective perpendicular lever arm of 2 centimeters. All right. Um, so to approach this problem, we got to just clarify, I believe one thing here, it's a little confusing, I think, uh, what this term exactly means, a net force she exerts, okay? Just get rid of the term uh, she exerts here. Uh, the reason being is because uh, these two, the net force and the term she exerts, in my opinion, don't really go together, all right? She's exerting a certain force on her radius, and then the force that she exerts combined then with the force of the weight would then produce a net force, all right? Uh, so just in terms of this problem, I'm just letting you know my assumption here that I'm just going to get rid of those two words in there. Um, it should simplify the problem and hopefully clarify a little bit uh, of the ambiguity. Okay, so now we need to, uh, so here's my picture, okay, there's a lot going on. So here's the humerus or the upper arm right here. This black line represents the radius or the forearm, okay? The reason why I chose the radius is because the bicep muscle, which is basically the um, green vector here, is the, is, right, it, it, it originates somewhere in the scapula. It then inserts somewhere into the, on the radius. And it's when the biceps muscle contracts, it rotates the lower arm, it rotates the forearm about the elbow, all right? So there's a weight out here, it's 0.24 meters away. It told us 24 centimeters, but I converted that, okay? And here's the mass of uh, the weight that she's holding. We know then if there's um, some net external force that this lever arm essentially is going to rotate about the elbow. We know then that there's gonna be some angular uh, acceleration and also some angular velocity. What we are after is we are after the angular acceleration. Okay, that's what the question asked. Angular acceleration, what is it? Okay, so now thinking about this, I know I have, right, I mean, it's kind of a giveaway at the end of the problem. It says 750 newtons, which is a force at a perpendicular lever arm, right? I mean, those words, th those terms should be screaming to you torque, all right? So basically they're telling us a torque and we have to find the angular acceleration. So my mind starts thinking, well, do I know any formulas that relate the two? And fortunately I do, right? And you do too. It's over here on the right-hand side. So that's what I'm going to start with. Okay, I'm going to lead with this formula. It says the sum of the torques is going to be equal to the moment of inertia multiplied then by the angular acceleration. Now to solve for the angular acceleration, I mean, this is simple algebra, right? Just divide on out the moment of inertia. All right, so this is the basic formula. Now, though, the difficulty lies in finding the uh, sum of the torques, which it not, won't be too difficult, but we have to find the sum of the torques in the problem, and we also have to find the uh, total system moment of inertia. Now, this this problem makes a simplification. Okay, you might if you if you do work out and you're familiar. I mean, you don't even have to work out to really understand this concept, but you know that if you're doing a bicep curl and you create, let me make the line a little nicer. If you create a right angle at your arm and there's a certain weight out here, this part of the exercise, okay, is much harder than this part of the exercise when you have to rotate your bicep, when you have to rotate your radius on up, right? The weight feels heavier here and then it feels like it's getting easier as you rotate up through the curl. Well, why is that? Why does it feel harder here and easier at the top to bring the weight up when the weight hasn't changed? Why is that? It has to all deal with the torque, okay? So notice, when I'm here, okay, and the weight is located at the end of the arm, right, there's a certain force pointing down, and we know that this distance is going to be 0.24 meters, okay? Now, how do you find the torque at this location? Easy. Remember, torque is just force, force times the perpendicular lever arm. OK, 
Okay, so it's just whatever the force is multiplied by this perpendicular distance to the axis of rotation, which is 0.24, okay? But now what happens when we rotate this arm on up, okay? When we rotate the forearm uh, upwards, what happens now? Well, let's see. So I'm going to now dash the line, okay? And now we still have the same force that's pointing down, right? I'll color this in red. So the force, the weight hasn't changed, meaning the force due to gravity, okay? The weight of this thing, the force has not changed. Neither has the length of your forearm, okay? The forearm is still 0 0.24 meters, but the torque has changed, right? Remember, the perpendicular lever arm is the distance, the perpendicular distance, the distance between the axis of rotation, which is the elbow, and the line of action of the force. So if I dot this line on down, right, this right here is your lever arm. That's your perpendicular lever arm because this distance forms a right angle relative to the line of action of the force. Now you can see clearly in the picture, this line is shorter than that line. So if my perpendicular lever arm is less and the force stayed the same, look at the formula, if this decreased, but that stayed the same, what has to happen mathematically to the torque? It also has to go down. That's why it feels easier, okay? A bicep curl will feel easier when you move away from 90 degrees because the torque has become less, all right? That's why the, when, you, when you're at the 90 degree point, that's the hardest part of the exercise, all right? So now that I talked about that discussion, the problem then you might say to yourself is, well, wait a minute, the, the torque is going to change, right? The torque changes depending upon where I am in my movement. The torque is greater here, then it's less, you know, at the top of the movement. So what, what do I have to do? Now, this is where calculus would come into play. You guys aren't doing calc-based physics, all right? So there's a way to do it, but we have to make a simplification. And sometimes a simplification is a little confusing to understand, all right? Um, the simplification here is that they're telling us the total net force that's being exerted. All right, so I know the problem is dynamic, but they're trying to make it static for us so that we don't have to do uh, higher level mathematics to try to figure this problem out. Okay, so what they're telling us is they're telling us the total net force that's acting over this whole span. And they're also telling us then the uh, perpendicular lever arm that, is, that it is acting on. That being the case, any, if you know the net force, remember, uh, another word, I should say this. I can rewrite this, okay, some of the torque, to mean net torque, right? Some of the torque is the same thing as net torque. Now, if I want to expand on my net torque, you can recall that what I just wrote on the, on what I just wrote over here before was that torque is equal to the force multiplied by the perpendicular lever arm. If I want to find the net torque, I better know the net force, okay? And they told that to us. So it simplified the problem. Otherwise, we would have to then, uh, you know, do some, like I said, more advanced mathematics in order to figure out what happens to the torque as we rotate. It's constantly changing because the lever arm is constantly changing, okay? So in this problem, this is the simplification here. We, they, they just told us the net value for the overall process. So we then can substitute on in for the net torque. We can say it will equal the net force multiplied by the perpendicular lever arm, okay? All then divided by the moment of inertia. Now let me expand on the moment of inertia. Remember, it's the total system moment of inertia, okay? Now there's essentially two components to this, right? So I'm actually going to erase this I up here. There's really two components to the total system moment of inertia. What are they? What objects are rotating in the, in the diagram? Well, there's two, right? Your forearm, which is a rigid bar, okay? That is rotating. And the weight. So there's two things that are rotating, okay? Now... That being the case, I'm going to then write that the total moment of inertia, I'm just going to write something like this. It's equal to, you know, mo the moment of inertia for the radius plus then the moment of inertia for the weight. Okay. Now, fortunately in the problem, they told us the forearm or the radius, okay, has a, 
Uh, maybe I shouldn't be, I mean, the, technically the radius is the bone of the forearm, but I realize that it might be causing some confusion, radius, and we're talking about, you know, circular uh, terms and whatever. I mean, it just so happens that the radius is actually the radius of the circular arc that the weight will create, so that's interesting. But um, anyway, I'm using radius and synonymous with the term forearm. So fortunately, they told us that moment of inertia, it's 0.25, okay, kilograms. So I know this value, okay? So I'm just going to leave it as IR down here. And then they want the, uh, but then we, they didn't tell us the moment of inertia for the weight. Now, we talked about this on several, on, on problem, uh, I think it was maybe the last problem or the problem before. You have to, in order to figure out what diagram in your book to use, you have to think about the nature of the object that this weight would carve out if it were to rotate about the axis, okay? So the weight is centered out here, and it's going to keep rotating, okay? And if it were to keep going, it would form kind of this object, right? Which is like that disc, right? That hollow disc uh, shape. Now, that being the case, what is the formula for that? Right, the formula in the book is just mr squared, Okay, so I know then how to calculate the moment of inertia for that weight. It's just simply going to be the mass of the weight she's holding multiplied by the radius of the arc. And that that's the part that I'm calling it the radius because that is the bone that the biceps is attached to, but it also happens to be the radius of the circular arc. And um, it will not be divided by two. It's just this. Okay. All right. So now... Hopefully that should make sense. So in order for, for me to calculate alpha, I need to know these uh, four, well, five things. And do we know all of them? And we do, right? They told us the net force, 750. They told us the perpendicular lever arm, 0.2 meters. They told me two centimeters, but I did the conversion, okay? The moment of inertia for the radius or the forearm, that is, 0.25. And we also know the mass of the, um, the weight is going to be two, and the radius is going to be the 0.24. Okay, so all I have to do is now plug in everything. So it's not that bad, but it's just a little hard to kind of understand the concepts fully. So, all right, so multiply it by that perpendicular lever of 0.02 and then divide this bad boy by now 0.25 plus then the mass, which was two kilograms, multiplied by the radius of 0.24 and that whole thing squared. Plug that all on into the calculator, 750 times 0.02, divided then by parentheses, 0.25 plus 2 times 0.24 squared. And what do we get? We get about 41.1. Okay, 41.1. And this is now radians per second squared. So that is the answer. Okay. Great. Letter B. How much work does she do? Okay, so now you're thinking... Okay, I got to calculate work, but I do have a rotating body. So is there a special formula for work of a rotating body? And there is. Okay, it's right over here on the right-hand side. So it says that the work of a rotating body is equal to the torque applied. Okay, is equal to the torque applied multiplied then by the angular displacement. Okay, now do we know the... And by the way, this would be if we want to find you know, the net work, then we have to know the net torque. Okay, it's similarly, it's similar to what I talked about over here. So I basically they're asking, they don't say net, right? But that's really what they're, that's really what they're asking. Um, so now this being the case, all right, I'll rewrite, I'll, I, blah, 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 blah. I will rewrite this, okay? That is going to be the net torque multiplied by the angular displacement. So the net torque we know already, right? I mean, we calculated over here. It's just the numerator. It's going to be, I'm going to plug in those values, okay? Uh, the angular, though, displacement, did they tell it to us? Remember, we need radians in here. No, they didn't. But what did they tell us about the angular displacement? They said that it's going to move 60 degrees, right? 60 degrees. Okay. So now you're thinking, can I convert 60 degrees into radians? Well, sure you can. You've done plenty of conversions from revolutions to radians. So the question you should be asking yourself is, how do I get from degrees to revolutions? Okay, well, if you rotated 60 degrees, right? If you rotated 60 degrees, how many revolutions would that be? You might say, oh, just divide it by 360. And you'd be right, because the conversion is basically this. For every one degree, 
there are, excuse me, <laughs> for every 360 degrees, there's one revolution, right? So the degree unit would cancel. And then now you have revolutions. And now we would have to say for every one revolution, there's two pi radians. And there you go. Okay. So this would just simply be 60 times 2 pi divided by 360. I'm going to use those values in terms of my calculation. So the work here that she that she does, or the network on the um, on the on the weight that she, uh, the network of the entire system, let me say, is going to simply be the net force multiplied by that perpendicular lever arm, then multiplied by the angular displacement, which we said should be. Uh, these values on up here. So let me just plug in my theta for now. And now I'm going to plug everything in. Okay. So we have 750 multiplied by 0 0.02 multiplied then by 60 times 2 pi all divided by 360. And voila, here's going to be our answer. So 750 times 0 0.02 times 60 times 2 times pi divided by 360. And we get about 15.7. 15.7 and that's in terms of joules all right and that would be the the network guys thank you very much for tuning in i really do hope this video helped please give us a hand help uh by subscribing that would be awesome hit the like button too and tell your friends all right we appreciate it very much and i will see you in the next video take care